Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome to the big show, everybody. We are passing the halfway point in the regular season, and we are hopefully reversing the curse tonight. After having some fun with the NFL injury situation last week, we had a couple of our own. Brooke Leonard out with a knee. Director Ryan Burgess playing hurt tonight with busted toes. So enough. If you've got a good luck superstition, please use it for our sake. Over on Web Island, Allie Graham is our starter. We write in with permanent marker. If you need anything first and 10 related, check out the website on WSLS.com, which brings us to our game of the week. Great programs, great rivalry. Glenver and Radford both have reached this point undefeated. Last three games in the series decided by three, two, and two points so 10 sports eric johnson was on hand for another edition of that series and it's usually decided late 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 typically yeah the last two matchups in the series decided on the last play of the game Uh, but as we know if we were told anything from history it would be close tonight but a harsh reality the past is the past okay needless to say let's get you to the highlights tonight coach steve helping Glover break down the opening huddle opening drive for them took nearly five minutes but it was halted look at the fumble here recovered by reese honaker rapper turned that into points landon clark that bad man hits luke woodard and he does the rest for the touchdown eight nothing lead after the two-point conversion how about woodard doing some work on defense as well interception right across the middle of the field and just one play later the Bobcats strike again look at this Clark hands off to Sincere Taylor no apologies yes from Sincere as he airs it out to Max Knipe swipes it for the 28 yard touchdown Radford like a Flintstones car going downhill no breaks here on fourth and 14 Clark steps up and hits Brandon Thompson 27 yard score Glenver held to a 35 yard field goal in the first half as the Bobcats Led 29-3 at the break. Second half, much of the same. Glenver kept fighting. Clark's pass here. Picked off by Jackson Camper. Camping out in the right spot. Glenver in good field position. But look at this deep pass from Brody Doyot. It's going to be picked off by Landon Clark himself. He also had a pick six tonight. Radford locked in like the final answer on a test for the 36-3 victory tonight. You know, I feel like our execution was 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 pretty flawless. Uh, so it's a credit it's a credit to the staff. It was really a credit to the kids. They went out there and they made a ton of plays. Uh, just we just asked for relentless effort for 40, 48 minutes, and we got it. We got it in all three phases. Uh, the O line, they said a statement. They made a statement early on, and they pretty much carried us to the win. It's great. Uh, we got some seniors that were last year seniors. We got them in the locker room, and it, they're ecstatic. They're so happy, and it was amazing to get that job done. All right, of course, Radford, uh, they told me earlier in the week that they were banking on their offensive and defensive lines. Those were the the strength of this team, and in fact, they called them the unsung heroes. Tonight, we found out exactly why. Three points for Glenver, lowest point total since spring of 2021. Appy? All right, we were talking about injuries to start this show. James River was off and running this year until the injury bug bit them. We checked back tonight to see if they are returning to full strength anytime soon. Hawaiian night, homecoming, I'm in for that. Late, later in this game, Bryce Smoot running it in for the Cavs. Little cartwheel and it's 7-0 Cavs. We're still in the first. It's the Knights trying to answer. Maddox Woodyard going to Cody Park, and that's a nice gain for the Knights. But a little later on, we'll move to the third quarter. It's Woodyard throwing a big pass. It's picked by Isaiah Easter. That is some quality defensive play. Later on, after a bad snap recovered by Carroll County, they'll end up in scoring position, and it's Bryce Smoot diving in to make it 14-0. No excuses, but James Rivers still without a whole bunch of key players. Carroll County is victorious for to nothing. The Cougars, of course, into the three rivers. They fall to Floyd 28 to 9. Hoge Hege, Royal Retreat over PH Clade Spring 24 14. Class one football now, and Giles ventures into the NRV and pays a visit to Auburn tonight. Let's get a look at that one. Here we go at the home of the Eagles. And Giles, when they get that single wing roll and look out, senior Christian Radcliffe for a 35-yard scamper and score. 
And yeah, dare I say it, single wing. Later in the first half, Giles again, but this time it's Jackson Parcell breaking a couple of tackles. He's in from 45 yards for six. And the Spartans keeping it rolling. Senior Jaden Ellis gets the handoff. He's bouncing outside. And this thing is difficult to defend. He's in for the touchdown. Eagles, though, going to get on the board right here. Austin Stump gets the pitch. Halfback pass. Isaac Wade is out there. And that's a 50-yard touchdown connection. But this one goes to Giles, 63-21. to the Maroon Tide defeat the Maroons 34 to 19 tonight. Perry McClure 22 to 7 over Fort Chiswell. So the Blues with a win. The Bears fall in a good one to Twin Valley 16 14. And the Rockets 38 14 losers to Mountain View Quicksburg. There's always one team flying under the radar a little bit. For me, at least, that's Coach Joe Favero's Warriors because we've been just waiting. And Magna Vista. Got it cranked up tonight. So let's get you out. They were at GW Danville. GW's band, always awesome. Magna Vista, though, starting out hot. Joseph Struggs has a hole. 20-yard touchdown, and the Warriors were rolling early. GW Danville with a response. Elijah Bridges up the middle, 10 yards, galloping in. And, yeah, a little flip of the ball right there. Eagles starting to fly, but then... There, uh, just got the ball back. This is Nehemiah Cable, Cabell, pardon me, looking to pass. Warriors serving up sack lunches. And then here they come back. Magna Vista looking to put it away. Scruggs, good option. And it's out of my kitchen. I'm cooking Mama's chili as he starts shaking off tacklers and running in 55 yards for the score. Magna Vista is, dare I say, dangerous, 46 to 14. Tunstall over Martinsville, 40-13 to tonight. And in a Thursday night game, Bassett went on the road and got a one-point win at Mecklenburg County. Rockbridge and East Rock played a wild one, 47-35. East Rock is victorious. My personal philosophy on injury, fall down seven times, stand up eight. And so it goes. Both the Bees and Eagles have been knocked down a couple times. We'll see which one is standing after tonight. The Spartans have had their share of injuries, but they've taken the adapt and advance philosophy. And at the home of the Terriers, we'll see if the dog pound is healthy as ever. Plus this. We're the James River Nights Cheerleaders, and you're watching First and Ten on WSL. We are back in an interesting cross-district matchup for breakdown. A couple of heavyweights that have tough schedules early on. Yeah. Franklin County out of the Blue Ridge, Brookville mm -hmm. out of the Seminole. Nobody's ducking anybody. They're playing no. everybody on the whole map. And right. uh, tonight we get to see, you know, what's what. Yeah, and they're both starting to find traction here in the middle of the season. Like you said, they're both are going through some rugged parts of their schedule, respectively. But here we go to the Eagles' nest. Flying high above tonight. Oh, yeah. Look, Look at, at that, that one Rocky Mount. We'll pick this one up in the second half. It was all the bees nest early. 16-0. They were up when Winston Davenport finds David Casey. Makes mm. a move, and he is gone. 75 yards to the house. 16-6 Six, to six bees in the lead now. Now later, 16-13. Bees after a second touchdown by Casey. Here he goes again for the hat trick. 69 yards wow. from Davenport. The Eagles lead 20-16 to 16 with under five minutes to go. How about Brookville responding? Responding. Jordan Whitelaw still a buzzing 15 yard touchdown run 22 to 20 bees back in front mm. ensuing kickoff the bees go onside kick the ball bounces okay. around a couple of times oh it's gonna find oh. Tristan Wright oh. and look at this he is out no, like he's a not. light. He's gone. Yes. Touchdown, Franklin County. Eagles defense gets an interception from Ethan Yeary on fourth down to win a wild one, 26-22. We just we had a couple of kids step up at the right time. A couple of things went our way. Uh, we, we probably got pushed around a little bit um, um, by them, you know, but uh, I, I guess the kids uh, – we found a way, you know, and a lot of times on Friday night, that's what you got to do. I'm not going to give myself all the credit. Um, week in and week out, I try to keep my team, my team's head high. Even if we're down at halftime, just come out at halftime and just make some big plays. And tonight was my night, and I made big plays. 
I mean, that's the epitome of a J.R. Edwards team, right? Yeah. Just simply find a way to win, yep. especially at home. Um, kudos to the Eagles putting up a big display tonight. Well, and they played everybody. They played yeah. the Steelers, the Cowboys. They, you know, they've scheduled everybody. So <laughs> now they're going to get some momentum here at some point. All Indeed. right, same two districts in another matchup. It's Heritage and Northside. So let's have a look at that one. The Pioneers coming off a couple of losses I'm sure they would like back. This is Heritage's Aiden Slash going to take it himself. Mixed, missed extra point. But it is 6-0 Heritage at this point. Northside's got a talented quarterback, Angel Rigney, but right here trying to do a little too much. He's hit, fall ball, and Colton Webster is on it. So Heritage going to capitalize on the turnover. Aiden Slash going up top to Quentez Petty. That's a pretty touchdown, 19-0 Heritage. Rigney, again, super talented athlete. Look at him book. Juking defenders was hit and fumbled on the end of this one, but teammate there to keep possession. Nonetheless, Heritage gets the victory 40 to 7. Meantime, Harrisonburg over Amherst tonight. The Hawks of Gretna having a nice year. 34 nothing over in the Dogwood. William Campbell a winner. How about Alta Vista over Appomattox? 56 to 16. Alright, the Spartans opening loss to LCA in a tight ball game has helped galvanize that team. Even with injury, Salem looks focused and they've Rung the bell, ladies and gentlemen, for whom the bell tolls. Peyton Lewis dominating the first quarter, running in a punt return, following it up with two rushing touchdowns. Here we go. There's another one. And how about a third? And it's 21-0 Spartans at the end of the first 12 minutes, courtesy Mr. Lewis and company. Chris Martin driving in for a touchdown. It's 27-0 second quarter. And Javion Jones gets involved. It's 35-0 Spartans over the Titans. And now we've got Lewis Taking it up one more time. Teammates in tow. Salem 51 to nothing. How about Pulaski County at PH tonight? Trailing 13-8 at the half. Pulaski's going to try to open up the offense, but the Patriots linebacker, Marque Cook, has other ideas shutting things down there after seven-yard loss. PH's Kowali Carter. Oh, is he ever talented. Breaking loose 40 from the 40, and yeah, good luck catching that young man. It's 20 to 8 pH, and we had a super moon tonight. I have no idea what astrologically that means, but it was a pleasant evening this Friday night. Cougars going to answer right back. This is Chase Lawrence capping the drive with a four-yard sweep. It was a 2015 game before pH took over 48 to 22. In a big-time battle of programs that we know have been deep in the playoffs and Riverheads, of course, the Class 1 power moving up to Class 2, 24-21 to 21 over Christiansburg tonight was your final. We're back to the Blue Ridge, and William Byrd's been building a beast this season. Only Christiansburg has had enough to deal with them. That said, it was military appreciation night at Byrd, rival Knights in, and the Terriers coming in 3-1. and one. Defensive struggle early. Bird trying to shake things up. Israel Hairston to Walter Barrows. Goes up, up, and away for the grab. But this drive stalls. Now keep in mind, Cave Springs first-year coach Hunter Shepard is a William Bird grad. Played for Coach Heifel. He knows you got to come in and play physical football. And his team did that early. Garrett Locker to Owen Sweeney. We've got a touchdown at 6 nothing. Cave Spring in this one. Second quarter. Late second quarter. More Cave Spring play action. Big tight end Briggs Smithson right here rumbling inside the five to set up a field goal. Knights led 9-0. Knights led 12-0. William Bird stormed all the way back for a 14-12 victory this evening. How about the William Fleming Colonels? Who's going to take off tonight with Halifax County in town? All right. First quarter, Colonels already up. 7-0, and it's Jasir Preston, quick pass, Kaya Jordan Nesbitt at the corner of the end zone, and then it's Preston just deciding he's just going to take off and do it himself. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, 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 ding. Under pressure, he just cruises in from 50 yards out. Second quarter, look at the defensive pressure by William Fleming. That is Jamari Hale right there with the QB sack. And then Jasir Preston right here on the quarterback sneak. Fleming 42 to 21. 
Meantime, before we leave you tonight, how about Franklin High School, the Broncos at Rono Catholic? 8-8 game at the half. Second half kickoff goes to Demarcus Brown. Demarcus is determined, splits the coverage, and then literally fakes a defender off his feet right there. 80 yards later, the Celtics have the lead. There it is. There's your touchdown. All right. And, uh... Marin Purdue handling the two-point conversion to make it 16-8. to eight. A back-and-forth affair goes to Franklin High School. This one was 36-30. to 30. North Cross, 24-15 over Blue Ridge. That game was 2 p.m. this afternoon. North Cross took the lead with about seven minutes to play in the game.